Okay, so select the movie clip editor and load in our movie clip. Okay, we can scrub through the timeline here and find our start and end frames. Now prefetch the clip. Okay, so these settings will be different depending on your footage. Um, but for this one, this these seem to work fine. Let's change this to location rotation previous and check normalize. Now if we control and click and scale this to set our first marker, G to grab. When you're happy with your marker, let's come down here, copy from active track at marker and any new ones will be the same settings. Now that one is track forward, we can set these the rest of them since we know it works fine. Follow them, track backwards. Okay, so we notice that we've tracked them in camera, so let's just control and C to copy them and delete them. Select a new control V, paste, and they're there, now that's fine. We can come to the camera and track the background, since I've only got this little dot here, we'll just mark, track this should work fine for what we're doing. Okay, so let's go down to solve. It says you need eight, so what we can do is just add two new markers. So I add here the corner of the mouth. We could use the eye, but since he opens his eyes, it's not gonna work. We'll just use the top of the hair. It should work fine. Let's track forward. Yeah, they seem to work fine. Okay, so what we need to do now, um, if we come to this solve keyframe, select keyframe first, then solve. 0.4 is not too bad. Um, it could be a lot better, but it will work. Don't think you need to solve this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so let's um, add a mask. So if you need to remove the markers on your person's face, um, this is a quick way to do it. Just add a new mask, marker removal it properly if I can and so what you need to do is right click on one of these markers like so and then left click on the inside come down here to mask add a circle then you can change these yourself which I didn't realize you could do it a lot quicker but um, the easier way is just come down here change a few of these settings like so Okay, and since they're both selected, you just press Control then P, and they will be parented, and then we've it should be fine. Now, if we hold Shift and drag this point out here, we can add the feather, and just do the same for the rest of them. Um, I do have a tutorial on how to remove markers if you want to go into a bit more detail, but that's basically how you do it. So when you're happy with your markers, let's just change this to planar, and back here change this back to tracking, prefetch if you need to. Okay, since it's been solved, what we need to do now is just set up the scene. So if you come to solve and then scroll down and we want set up tracking scene and we can now change this back to 3D view. Okay, so we don't need these two objects here so we can delete them. And if we press N, bring up your properties and go down to background images, add image, movie clip, we can see what we're doing. Okay, so if we select one of these markers here, and then we start, press space bar, type snap, we want snap cursor to selected. So when we shift A and add in a plane, it'll, be right, it'll stick right there. Okay, so let's go to the constraints, and we're gonna add a object solver. Uncheck active clip, select your movie clip that we're working on. Object is planar, and the camera is the camera. If you still don't see it, select inverse, set inverse, and that should be fine. So now we can scale it down to size. Uh, just turn on screencast. Okay, so yeah, if we scale it into position, we can also rotate. Um, should be fine. So 
So when you're happy with the position of your plane, what we want to do is add a new texture. We can call it wound. Just open it, split our window here. And we can change this to the node editor. And we're going to use a image texture. Well, we're going to use two image textures, but for now we're going to use one. So we shader uh, texture, image texture. Let's open it up. So we're going to be mixing it with um, transparent shader, but first let's just, um, yeah, let's just connect this first. And we will need a mix shader, not a color. There we go. And shader, transparency, connect them up. Okay, so let's just move these out of the way. Tie things up. And what we can do is use the alpha as the factor. And then we just need to change these to here. And that should work fine. We may need to come back and change this, but I think that should work fine. Change this to rendered. Oh, oh yeah, what we need to do is the plane has been added to the bottom layer, so we need to just press M, move it to the top at the top layer, because we're going to be using two layers in a second. Let's change this, and we don't need any of these nodes that it's already set up for us. What we do need is an input, movie clip, render layers, and then output we need a composite and a view row for now. The render layers, we can get rid of background, we don't need that one. Foreground can stay, that'll be our main layer. And we just add a new one, and we can call this mask. Then in the layers over here, we just need the one wrapped to the right, and that's already selected as the left one. Make sure your two here for the scene are selected. We can also get rid of this mask, we don't need it. Okay. I just change this uh, texture here for the the plane. Get rid of that from the factor. And just duplicate the image that we have. Delete it. Open a new one. I have a black and white version of it there. That'll be fine. And we can use this for the factor. It seems to work better. You just need to add an invert node. It seems to work better. Okay, switch it back. Okay. So what we need to do now, um, join this, no, just leave it. Okay, let's change this to 3D. And I think, yeah, if we change this now to material, we won't be able to see anything because we've not actually unwrapped the plane. So if we just tab into edit mode and press U to unwrap, and there we go, we can see it. Just give this a quick render. The main one. Okay, that looks fine. Let's get these connected. We just add a mix. Uh, move this out of the way. Zoom in a bit. So we connect this to the bottom of it and select the checkered box. We can see it. Adds, uh, add a bit of RGB curves. You can add a bit of uh, detail to it, make it more integrated into your scene, would be better. I'm just going to change this a little bit here. And you really want to blend it in to the scene, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to add it on. A bit of red. It should be fine. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way. In fact, let's just move everything out of the way. And let's get rid of the dots on the face first. So in the previous tutorial that I've done, you can see it goes into detail how I can how you get rid of the dots on the face, but this is pretty much the same thing. 
just very simplified. Add a mix, get rid of these so we don't get confused. Okay, add this to the bottom part of the mix, and we add a blur, so filter, blur. Change this to 20 by 20, just for now. And what we want to do is add in a, a mask. So let's go to input mask. Select the mask that we made. Anti-alias is fine. And we add the mask into the factor. Now if it doesn't change automatically, you just need to mix these and then change them back and it should work fine. Increase the blur, and it looks a lot better than it did. Again, if your footage is better than mine, you sh it will look a lot better. And also, if you decrease the size of the dots when you put the markers on the person's face, it should work out a lot cleaner as well. So let's connect these back up. Okay, all we need to do is select that to the top one, it's fine. So now to do the healing effect, what, um, all we need to do is duplicate this layer and if we change it to the mask layer that we set up, now if we come back here to the 3D window and we need to duplicate this, so we should just shift D, duplicate it and we're going to move it to the next window, uh, the next layer, and we Come to the textures, press 2 to make it a single user, label it heal. And this one isn't going to be color at all, this one's just going to be black and white. So we jump to the node editor. And what we need to do is get rid of this one. No, keep this one, which is the black and white one, and get rid of the colored one. So we just select the color output from the black and white one, put it into the diffuse. That should work. I don't know if the transparency will cause us problems later, but we can work around it. If it does, just delete that. And select, if we're still in the node editor, change it back over to the nodes and render. Bearing in mind, you do need to keep both um, layers selected. Um, since we don't see it, I'm guessing that's what the problem is. Yeah. So we need to select the both of them by shift clicking. So both renders are going to be like layers are going to be rendered. Yeah, they seem to look fine. Okay. So since we've got both of them uh, render layers set up, we can use one of them. To, well, you can use the bottom one to become the mask. So let's scrub through here, find where we want the effect to start from. So we'll say here. And what we're going to do is we just mix. Actually, we want to add in a filter. Just see this, move this in the view. Okay, so we add a filter down here. Dilate your road node. And then copy that. Okay, so we just press I in both of these to start. This is where the start is going to be. Come all the way over to here where you want your end and increase this to say five and just drag this out as much as you want. Okay, so again, press I to insert a keyframe and now that's the start of the healing effect. What we need to do is change this to feather. You can add some blurs onto it and add a few different effects, maybe a few noise effects and make it change it, make it look different. This will work fine. Just change a few here. Keep tweaking it until you're happy with the way it, um, the effect plays out. You basically want it to go all white, completely white. Or at least pretty grey. Okay, so now you've done that, we need to connect these back up. So this can go into the factor. Okay, mm, that's not working the way I need it to, so 
what you can do, you can change, click this, if it doesn't work sometimes, change these over. If that doesn't work, then you can change the blend mode. But I actually know what the problem is now, it's the transparency. So if we come down to here, the render layer has got transparency, which we don't need. So we just add it with a mix, uh, connect this to the bottom, and select this. There we go. So it's now black and white mask rather than a transparency thing, which we shouldn't have done. <laughs> so anyway, let's plug them in. They look work fine. Let's view this, and it looks like it's backwards. So let's just add an invert node. So, and there we go. The effect will stick to the faces. In this, it won't for some reason. Um, it needs to be updated. You need to render it every time to see it following the face. But obviously, it will uh, move with the face. The effect itself, um, you can tweak, make it go faster, slower, change it, have different um, noise types. Just mix it up and uh, make it your own.